Right, we are back. We're going to try something a little bit more fancy. <laughs> this is probably as fancy as I've got, apart from my gemstone videos. So we're going to recreate a kind of... What would you call it? A turquoise look, maybe? I don't know. It's going to look fancy anyway. So I saw this nail art video on a different platform, and I really wanted to bring it across to the resin side. It's probably been done before, I don't know. So for this one, we are going to need flat moulds that aren't domed on the other side, like our usual moulds that we've got where we work from the front to the back. We need to work from the back to the front. So I've got these. These aren't ideal for the resin that I'm going to be using. Uh, these are anything translucent and flat would work. So for this one, we are using UV resin. I haven't tried this with standard yet. This is just me experimenting, trying to get the effect with, with UV resin first. So I'm going to begin by adding, it's empty, it helps if you get a bottle that isn't empty when you start a video. Well, I know that one's not empty. Look at the size of that. <laughs> so this is the 1000 gram UV resin from Let's Resin I've now switched to. And I'm just going to begin by pouring some into my mixing cup. And I'm going to use mica powders for this, but the trouble is they don't have a turquoise in the 36 mica set so I'm going to try and make my own and to do that I'm mixing a cyan with a spring green it might not turn out spot on but I'm going to give it a, a good try anyway so I'm going to begin by adding the cyan to the resin and then I'm going to add some of the spring green. And we can adjust it once we've mixed to see what we need more of. The colour's not really showing up on camera very well. But I think I need some more of the green in there. Again, you can't really see it, but it's as close to turquoise as I can get. So again, because we've mixed mica with UV resin, we just need to be careful that we don't put too much in the mould at once because it will not cure. So I'm just going to add a small amount as our base and just spread that around. Where's my silicon tip tool would be better? And just spread that all around. And then we just give that a couple of minutes. And I've just made a head start on this one. I'm going to layer this one up so it's at the same kind of place as this one and when you're layering as well instead of using the tool because if you if you use the tool it will disturb the pigment of the mica and it will look a little bit off so just tilt the mold and allow the resin to spread around so once they're cured we can then pop them out of their molds and lay them onto our mat because things are going to start getting messy <laughs> So all we're going to do now is just add another thin layer of taking it out of the moulds because, as I said, things are going to get messy and you don't want to do this whilst it's in your mould. So just spread that around all the way to the edges on both pieces. And this is what I mean about the tool marks. I'm just going to use my torch just to spread that out a bit more so it doesn't look that man-made. Now, in this cup, I'm just going to pour some acetone. You can do this with alcohol. I have tried and I will show the results shortly. And then I'm going to add some black mica powder. Just like that. And then you want a paintbrush. Just mix that. Here comes the messy part. We're just going to spray that. I need some more mica. I didn't put enough in. So it does take a bit of mica. You could put this into a needle tip bottle and just pour it when you want. It does take a bit of mica. Just dab my brush. And then spray it. And you can see what it's doing. It's making a massive mess on my craft mat. You 
huge mess. I think that'll do. So just make sure that you're fully prepared for the amount of mess that you're going to make. And now we're just going to cure that. And what, what will happen is it will create some kind of craters in that surface resin. And if you want, as it's curing, you can just add a bit more of a blush effect on the pieces. It's entirely up to you. You could do this with different colours as well. It doesn't have to be this colour. I mean, we're not artists unless we create some kind of mess, really, are we? <laughs> so now out comes the gold flakes. So I'm just going to use a dotting tool for this and just take out some of the gold flake. It doesn't have to be tidy. That's the good thing. You can just add them, push down with your finger, spread them a bit if you want. I'm just going to add some on opposite sides of the piece so down here and up there on both pieces so all that's left to do now is just dome them and this one I will drill afterwards with my hand drill so just apply a small amount to the middle of both pieces a level surface will really help with this And then with my silicon tool, I'm just going to go up to the edges on both pieces, being careful not to push the resin too far that it falls over the edge and creates a mess. Because that would mean needing to clean up or sand afterwards. And then we just finalise that with our last cure. And as always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. Thank you very much. All product links are in the description box below. Don't forget the 10% discount with all Let's Resin products. So to make this one into an earring, I'm just going to take a jump ring and just bend that apart like so. Pop it through the hole and then I'm going to take one of my earring loops now you can do this a different way you can add a smaller jump ring to make these attach because it's going to be round the wrong way but what you can also do is just gently twist that loop around so it's then facing the correct way for that um, loop that's on there and then we can just put, pop that through you could dress these however you like it really is up to you it would help if you put it on the right way round, though. <laughs> there it is. So you can make matching earrings. That I really like this effect. So this is the one that I did with alcohol inks. And it was almost the same. It just didn't create the kind of small dotting cavities that we can get. So this one was heavier with the mica powder, but you can see the effect. So again, you can make matching earrings. And for the pendant, I just drilled a hole through the top, attached my bow so that is ready to dress onto a necklace. Really cool, pretty simple pieces to make, really. And again, you can just do these any color you want. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment if you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. And I will see you for the next one. Have fun creating. Bye for now.